đưa lạ vô vơ giấc mơ có anh và em mình cùng nhau tay trong tay và cùng bay Hey, I'm Antonio Grisefo, it's Martial Arts Odyssey. Today we're in Hanoi, Vietnam, and we're learning Vo Vi Nam. And this is my teacher, Master Tun. Yeah. Nice to see you today. Yeah. And we're in the park, and we're training in the park because uh, they don't have a lot of indoor schools in Vietnam, so you train in the park. So the one problem when it's raining, when it's raining, we can't train. <laughs> So we wound up missing some days, but we're here in the park today, and you'll see people over here, they're just finishing up their dance class, there's people playing volleyball, it's a nice atmosphere. When I'm training in Thailand, everyone always asks me if I kick trees, and I'm like, why would I kick trees? We got perfectly good kick bags and equipment at the gym, but here in Vietnam, we have to kick trees. Um, we don't have a lot of equipment and we're training outdoors all the time in the park so the trees are the obvious things for us to kick. The two main pieces of training equipment that we use are our friends and our trees. So you see the Vietnamese martial artists doing a lot of training where they're using their partner uh, for resistance to condition their body, condition their muscles, make themselves tougher and then also we hit the trees. <laughs> Và cùng bay nhẹ nhàng Lượng chân có gió nhẹ đưa vượt ngàn chập trong mây cao Phút bay theo ánh sao trời và vầng trăng kia lông lên Nói cùng thế Ai yêu nhìn em, nhìn ấm mắt em Đã xin giữ những đi xa So every morning I come out here barefoot, kick the trees, and practice the uh, arm hardening and shin hardening techniques with Mr. High. So they, they do all these kind of conditioning techniques where you're using your partner for resistance. And part of the reason why I think they do it, or why they did it originally, is maybe they didn't have equipment or didn't have money to buy equipment. So they train with each other, and now it's become sort of a tradition that in this type of martial art, you use your partner for resistance, you're hitting your partner, you're pulling on your partner. This is your muscular training, this is your toughening. Now, some of the things they do is toughening up their hands, which as a boxer, I've never toughened up my hands. My hands have been babied, they've been wrapped, they've been inside of the gloves, they've been protected my whole life. So I'm not used to that, but I like the other things, conditioning the forearms, it's very important for when we're going to block, when we're fighting, conditioning the shins, it's very important for fighting. So, these are really excellent exercises, and it's kind of like taking a step back and learning the old ways of training. <laughs> The secret to this type of shin hardening conditioning is that you have to do it every day and you just do a little bit. I hit my shins with this metal bar but I'm not hitting them very very hard, I'm not hitting them terribly hard but I do it for about a minute or so on each shin every day and you just tap 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 and don't forget that tomorrow is another day and you work your way up and down the shin inside and out and then you switch shins. Because we don't have any bags to kick, I gotta condition my shins. And what's really funny when I'm training in Thailand, people always write to me and say, Are you kicking trees? Are you hitting yourself with sticks? We don't do any of that. Well, because I'm here and I got no other option, that's exactly what I'm doing. So, taking this, and they don't have any wood here, so I'm using a metal bar. And it's every day I'm whacking my shins with it and hoping to, uh, you know, continue with my toughening up my shins, strengthening up the bones for when I go back to Thailand and fight again. I like practicing the fighting techniques and self-defense techniques with uh, Master Tun. The way I look at it is fighting is a problem that every human being has to solve or every culture has to solve and then it's just interesting to see how they go about doing that and it's different from country to country. Yeah, yeah. Now look, look at, look at what he's got. He's got pushing on my elbow here. Anytime you want to get control of somebody, you get on the elbow. That's where you put pressure. And his hand, he's not gripping my wrist. He's not gripping it. He's just pushing it away. Just pushing it away. Yeah, you don't. No. Yes, no. Like, oh, sorry, because. 
Oh, look at this. <laughs> so you can come over here and get me in the eyes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the Bo Bi Nam martial art was invented by Nguyen Lok, who was Vietnamese nationalist wanted to free his country from the French colonization. He began studying various types of martial arts and he took a little bit from each one, put them together, and in about 1938 he released Bo Vinam to the public. This would explain why we see so many different elements within Bo Vinam. We'll see things that look like uh, Korean martial art, Japanese martial art, Chinese martial art, Thai, Khmer, it's all mixed up in there. <laughs> he, just, he just kicked my calf muscle. It's a very complete system in that it has everything, uh, animals, weapons, uh, grappling, striking, kicking, punching. Today, Vovinam is widely practiced outside of Vietnam. Many of the Vovinam associations are headquartered in France as well as in the United States. Always on the on the elbow. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Wan Kim Lake in Hanoi. This is a location which has a very special place in the fighting heart of Vietnam. The legend says that long ago when the Emperor Le Loi was driving the Chinese out of Vietnam, a magic turtle rose to the top of this lake and gave a special enchanted sword to Le Loi. The sword was said to have been inscribed with the words, The Will of Heaven, which he used to vanquish the enemy and win Vietnam its final independence from China. After the war was over, Le Loi returned to the lake. He threw the sword back into the water, returning it to the magic turtle, who said that if Vietnam was ever in peril again, he would return and bestow the magic sword on a worthy hero. That sword is out there somewhere. I'm going to find it. I'm not